Welcome to Empower Your Pattern with President James Hendrick, a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, adversity educator, and success confidence and thrive coach. He'll teach you the patterns of success set forth by the Word of God. So, if you're ready to join, get ready and enjoy the way to empower yourself. Come on, folks. Let's join together. Let's fly. Hello, welcome to Pattern Realm. Come sit here in the Pattern Castle. We got our tools together to get our boat to sail, but we got to, to put our motor in. So what does that mean? This episode is called DBE21. Does God want us to have abundance? And, and of course, I have my own answer. And, uh, but we're gonna, I'm, I'm going to make sure you can find your own answer, okay? Because I'm not gonna do all the work for you all the time as a podcast. Number one, don't use the yes no toggle switch. Number two, don't use the depends. The answer to this is dependent on this one equation. Needs times faith is your motivation. What is your motivation? So, does God want us to have abundance? I would say, hypothetically, yes. Okay, but first, first, and listen to me. <coughs> the first thing is, and I want you to think about this. Hypothetical case. You are Christopher Horton. You're expecting a major inheritance of your father. And you just married Elena Ortiz. And you had her sign a contract that says that You married under the reason that your grandfather was dying. But that once he dies, the marriage is over. Now, I say we go ahead and get this done. Let's go to John. Uh... Chapter 10. We're going to go to verse 10, okay? We'll listen to this. Because part of your answer lies here in what Jesus has to say. He says this in John 10, 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they may have my have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. And the reason why I gave this hypothetical case is because that is, that and many other cases and movies and crap I see organized on social media can, can put some doubts in your mind. But it all goes down to your motivations, okay? This equation, what is your motivations? And, and, and what is your needs and what's your faith? Because you don't have faith and you're entering into a marriage, there's a problem. Or say there's a mental law that says, even, hey, I want you to sign this contract for the conditions of uh, marrying my son. Now, here's what I want if I was a father in law. I would take the, the married couple, uh, the, the engaged couple aside, married in a part, and I would ask them, are you living the commandments? Are you collectively living the, t- the commandments? Do you have an atonement of Jesus Christ? Do you? Okay, because here, here's, look over to Matthew, 
uh, chapter 6, verse 33. And I want you to think about this. He wants you to have abundance, but you need to have this caveat in order to enjoy this abundance. Are you ready? Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, okay? So there you go. Alright. So Now, this is key for you to understand. For, for you to understand. And, and I'm looking at this. Uh, okay, I think it's in uh, Matthew 20, uh, Matthew 6. So I'm asking you to be patient with me on this. Let me be patient with this because I want you to try to understand this, this principle here. Because God wants us to have abundance. But it's only on the basis of your motivation. Okay. And please understand this. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 No man can serve two masters for either he will um, hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, what is mammon? What is it? What it is, is where you make the things of this world, money, worldliness, your God. Now, I'm going to go, those of you not a member of the church, please forgive me. But this goes into my abundance argument of, okay, here is your, uh, Here is your, uh, the test, if you will. Of where your motivations are. All right. So I want you to think about this. And, and, and please hear me out on this, okay? Because this is uh,
this is important, and I'm, I'm trying to find this particular uh, verse because it's it's uh, here we go Jacob chapter 2 verse 18 but before ye seek for riches seek ye for the kingdom of God and verse 19 and after ye have obtained a hope in Christ, you shall obtain riches if ye seek them, and ye will seek them for the intent to do good. What is your motivations? What is your thoughts? What is your intent? If you go by what social media and a lot of the status symbols and stuff in the world, like, Oh, you can marry my son, but these are the contracts, and you know. And, and then there's this lady saying, Well, he's in the wheelchair and lying on these birth defects. So I don't marry him for the money. Now, that's a problem. With a motor like that on the good ship Bountiful, this ship will not move. In fact, it will corrode. All right. Now, and I know normally I'm not supposed to do this, and I haven't done it for a few days, but I'm going to talk about it. Some of you know that as of last Friday, I began a relationship with a lady named Blanca that I know from church. And, you know, special um, shout out to Blanca. Hey, Blanca, mi amor, mi amor. See, I think that's a blessing. Because she told me, she said, I don't care about your, your birthday fix and all that stuff. She said, I just love you. She's looking at your man that's got a heart for God, a, a heart for the commandments. And see, that's what it should be. It's okay to have abundance. But in the event that we have money or abundance, the status is our God. I'm going to preach it. That is, that is a dangerous path. You know, because in the, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and go to, I'm going to go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. Just to illustrate something, and I'm, I'm asking you guys to please uh, bear with me as I do this, because this is very, this is very important to me. So please bear with me, because we, we, we need to know these things. We need to know these principles. Oh, but Jimmy, come on. Why? Because it's important. Okay. First Timothy four. I want you to think about this. And I want you to look at this.
No, I want you to think about this. Maybe it's in another part of First Timothy. Let's see. Maybe Second Timothy, but I could have sworn it was First Timothy. Here it is. First uh, Timothy chapter six, verse ten. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some uh, coveted after. They have uh, erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. See, if you make God money, okay, listen to me. If you make money, you're God. Oh, wait, this my God. He has his work to Well, you know, I've got to have that money. Okay, yes, you got to have money to live. Okay, you do. That's a fact of life. But if you say, you know, I'm just going to go out and get out of my money and that's the money while the ocean to heck with everybody else, guess what? God doesn't want you to have uh, abundance if you're pursuing your motivation that way, okay? And that's like some preachers say, God loves you so you have to be rich. No, that's not necessary. Why? To me, it negates the principle, number one, of, of needs first. And, and, and your faith through the hard work, that brings in your motivation, okay? That brings in your motivation. And you put those together. If you've got the right motives where it's about God first and, and you know, your family or your significant other, you know, your, your spiritual family, whatever, that's, that's the thing. And you've got that and it works for you, then, then fantastic. God, your family, your country, and, and then your business calling, your career. That's how it has to be. Wow, give me wait, 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 wait. I can't believe you said if God wants us to have a have abundance, God wants us to have abundance. But he wants our minds and lives and hearts to be centered on him. Not on crap crappy hedonism, which is only going to lead to pain and sorrow. That's why I've been reading these verses to you. Oh, but, but Jimmy, wait a minute now. Come on. I can't believe that you would actually say that. No. Because you put in God first. That's the motor to the ship that is now running, ready to launch in the next episode where we go. And seek after our our, our he rife, okay? We we burn the bridges to some of the superficial things. You know, we, we've learned all that needs to be learned, and now it's advanced, advanced studies. We go to well, more like intermediate studies. Okay. And then of course as as the series goes. It goes to more advanced studies. But w w you, you got your motor running. With, with, with being a Christian, putting God and Christ first, and in your relationship second, 
your country third and your business calling and career fourth, you got your motor in. Hope you enjoyed listening to Empower Your Pattern. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and become a part of Pattern Realm. Till next time, don't just sit there and take it. Build your dreams so you can take it. And do what others don't so you can be what others want. And do what others want so you can have what others can't. Please share this with Mamacito, Papacito, and everybody. This is Jimmy Hendricks. Until next time, choose, act, and pursue happiness. God bless you. Remember this from the bottom of my heart. Jimmy loves you. I really, really, really love you. God bless you. And please, have a blessed day. Happy Sabbath. <laughs>